Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I want to talk about regenerative braking on e-bikes. Specifically, why don't more e-bikes use it? Now I see this come up all the time. Whenever a new e-bike is introduced or there's a video about e-bikes, people are always commenting, does it have regenerative braking? Why doesn't it have regenerative braking? They should have put regenerative braking. There's a lot of interest in regenerative braking. However, there just aren't that many e-bikes that have it. So what's the deal? Why don't more e-bikes have regenerative braking? Well, there are a few reasons for this. First of all, you need the right type of motor to actually do regenerative braking. Not just any motor will work. You generally need what is known as a direct drive motor, and these are usually larger, heavier motors. The reason these motors can do regenerative braking is that the uh, magnets are always spinning past the stator or the copper coils whenever the uh, motor is turning or whenever the bike's wheel is rolling. The advantage is that this can always generate electricity when you want to engage the brakes, the disadvantage is that it adds extra rolling resistance. There's a magnetic resistance every time those magnets roll past the copper. And so for someone who wants to pedal an e-bike and not have any resistance when the bike is off, a uh, direct drive motor is going to be a problem because it's gonna give you more resistance. That's why so many electric bicycles don't use this type of direct drive motor. They use what's known as a geared motor. And geared motors actually have a centrifugal clutch or a spring clutch, which means that when the motor isn't being powered, the bike is just coasting, that the uh, motor's not actually being engaged. Those magnets are not spinning past the copper coils and you're not getting that resistance. That allows the motor to freewheel in the forward direction and someone can pedal the electric bike just as easily as they would pedal a normal bike. The disadvantage is that you just can't do regenerative braking if you don't have those magnets spinning past the copper coils. Now, this isn't always true, and there are a few geared motors out there that can do regenerative braking. The reason they can do it is they've actually had the clutch removed or frozen so that it is always engaged. And what that means is that the magnets are always spinning past the copper. Again, advantage, you can do regenerative braking now with that geared motor disadvantage, you're going to have more resistance when you're pedaling without any electrical help. This is also the reason you won't see regenerative braking on mid-drive bikes. And I see this question a lot, why don't mid-drives have regenerative braking? It would make so much sense. Well, the problem is, again, they usually have either a spring clutch or a freewheel in the mid-drive motor, and that means that the motor isn't spinning when the bike wheel is turning without any electricity being applied. So you're not getting that parasitic loss, but you're also not getting the ability to do regenerative braking. The second reason that a lot of bikes don't have regenerative braking is simply that it doesn't actually create that much useful energy. Now it does create some useful energy, but I found that in my own experience, I rarely get a return of more than around 5% of the energy that I use on a ride returned as regenerative braking energy. That means that if I'm going out on a 20 mile ride, I'm never gonna get more than about one mile of charge back into the battery. Now, one mile is obviously good, and if I only had 20 miles of range and I needed to go 21 miles, that would get me the extra distance. But it's just not a huge amount. It's not like in cars that can generate higher percentages, often 10, 15%, simply because they have more rolling mass and they're not fighting air resistance as much the way bikes are. So more of that energy that they put into driving can be recaptured in regenerative braking. For bikes, the equation just doesn't work out as well, and we just don't capture as much as that energy back into the battery, which means that it's not always worth the cost to put it in. Speaking of the cost, that's sort of the third reason that you don't see so many e-bikes with regenerative braking. You have to use parts that are a little bit more sophisticated. You have to use a controller that actually has built-in regenerative abilities. That's a slightly more expensive controller. It's a little bit more of a complication. You need a battery that can handle the regenerative charging. Now, this is fairly simple and most batteries can do it. However, if your BMS isn't set up to be charged through regenerative braking, which generally means that the BMS is receiving charging through the discharge uh, connector, which is basically charging it backwards, then there could be complications down the road. This is a bit of a more rare scenario, but imagine if you lived at the top of a very large hill and you started with a full battery, and then you uh, started riding down the hill with the brakes on. Well, if you started at 100% charge and you're regenerative braking, you could actually be charging the battery past 100%. This is possible and batteries can be charged past 100%. Uh, in fact, 4.2 volts is the full voltage uh, level for a lithium ion battery, and they can actually be charged to 4.3, 4.4 volts. 
By 4.5, you're risking explosion and fire, so you really shouldn't charge them uh, past what they're rated for. But it is possible to do this. You're simply drastically cutting the life of the battery. So worst case scenario, your battery explodes from a, a battery that can't handle regenerative braking under that situation. Best case scenario, you're simply cutting the life of your battery, perhaps by as much as an order of magnitude. So there are more expensive parts that go into creating an e-bike that can handle regenerative braking. You need a BMS that is designed to do this safely. You need a controller that can do this. And there are bikes that do that. The, um, the, Rad, uh, the Rad City is one that does it. The Rad Wagon used to, but they're switching to a new geared motor, so they don't anymore. And there are other bikes out there that do regenerative braking, but they're just becoming a lot more rare these days for those reasons. So many bikes are using geared motors, which don't allow it. The regenerative braking function doesn't create that much usable energy, and it's simply more expensive to use parts that are designed for regenerative braking. So for those reasons, most e-bike manufacturers are just passing on it. If you want to get a bike that does regenerative braking, that's awesome and it's a cool way to charge your battery and get a little bit more range, but keep in mind that it's just not going to be, you know, doubling your range or creating some huge improvement like people might imagine that it would. Alright, so I hope that covers some of the reasons why there just aren't that many e-bikes out there that do regenerative braking and why it seems like so many manufacturers are passing on that function. Thanks for watching everybody. Last but not least, let's choose the randomly selected comment from my last video that will win one of my books in the giveaway. And the randomly selected commenter is... CP297421. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. You can choose from my books DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below and hopefully you'll be randomly selected at the end of my next video. And for those that don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.